Hi everyone. So the first grammatical concept that we're going to go over is this semester is the comma splice. And a comma splice is actually an error. It's a grammatical error. So if you have a comma splice in your writing, you're doing something wrong. Um, it's a really common error. Uh, so we're going to talk today about how to fix that error and what that error is. So, first of all, if it'll let me click. Okay, so a comma splice. Writers often use commas inappropriately because they force them into sentences where they do not belong. So, a comma splice. The act of joining two independent clauses with a comma is called a comma splice. So you cannot have a comma do the work of a different type of punctuation. Also, you might be wondering what an independent clause is. An independent clause is a complete sentence. It's a clause that has a subject and a verb and it can stand alone by itself. So when you try to join two independent clauses or two complete sentences together, you can't just use a comma to do that. That's incorrect. That would be what a comma splice is. So it's called a comma splice because the word splice is used because it means the comma literally fuses or splices the two complete thoughts together. So the victims that get left out of sentences with independent clauses are periods, semicolons, and coordinating conjunctions, and we're going to talk about those on these next slides. But here is a picture of the comma being a big bully and um, kicking out the other types of punctuation that should be used rather than a comma in joining two independent clauses or two complete sentences. <coughs> Sorry. So here's some examples, two examples of comma splices. The first one in blue says, the cat ran home, comma, the dog chased her the whole way. Now, that comma is a comma splice because the cat ran home is one complete sentence. You have cat as the subject and ran as the verb. The cat ran home, complete subject, all on its own. The dog chased her the whole way is another complete sentence all on its own. It's another independent clause. Dog is the subject, chased is the verb. Now you're trying to combine those two independent clauses or those two complete sentences with just a comma. And that is incorrect. That's a comma splice. The other example I have for you today is I got to school late today, comma, Miss Mac gave me a detention. Again, a comma splice, you're using a comma to join two independent clauses or two complete sentences. If you look on both sides of that comma, you have two complete sentences. I got to school late today, a complete sentence. Miss Mac gave me a detention, another complete sentence. You cannot only use a comma to join those two together. So we can look at some ways that we can fix these types of sentences to make them grammatically correct. First of all, you can just separate the two sentences completely by using a period. So periods are useful when you are writing about separate subjects or two sentences that are not closely related. So for example, the wrong example, again, this is an example of a comma splice, the cat ran home, comma, the dog ate the bone. The right way to write that would be the cat ran home, period, the dog ate the bone. Why would you use a period here instead of a different type of punctuation that would combine the two sentences? Because you have two completely different subjects and two completely different verbs. They're not closely related whatsoever. You have a cat running and then you have a dog eating, right? So you should separate those two with a period. But no matter what you choose to do, you cannot only use a comma because that would be a comma splice. The semicolon. Many people are really um, like nervous to use a semicolon because they don't know what it is or what it does, and it's actually super simple. Um, you can think of it as like doing the same thing as a period does, only it connects instead of separates. So here is a picture of a semicolon. This is what a semicolon looks like. You can find this on your keyboard. It's like two to the left of the enter key. Um, on the right hand side of your keyboard. 
Um, that is actually going to be a question on your assignment later today, so you are going to need to be able to find that on your keyboard. So for an example, look at the correct way to use a semicolon. The cat ran home, semicolon, the dog chased her the whole way. So now we still have two different subjects. We have a cat and we have a dog, but we have the cat running home and the dog chasing that same cat. So it makes sense that both of those thoughts, even though they're complete sentences, you can still express them in the same sentence by joining them with a semicolon. All right, so a semicolon can be used on its own to connect two independent clauses. This is not an error. This is the correct way to do it. So when it makes sense to express both of the thoughts in the same expression or the same sentence, use a semicolon. Don't be afraid of it. Okay, the last way to join independent clauses would be with coordinate conjunctions. Um, there are seven coordinate conjunctions, and that's it. That's all th there are. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And they can be used with a comma when it makes sense to use them. So, for example, look at this correct way right here. The cat ran home, comma, and the dog chased her the whole way. It makes sense, doesn't it? The cat ran home and the dog chased her the whole way. The only thing you need to remember when you use a coordinate conjunction is you always have to use a comma before the coordinate conjunction. Okay, so you can't just use the word and. You also can't just use the comma. You've got to use both together in order to make it work. So any of these seven coordinate conjunctions after a comma when you're joining two independent clauses, okay? So here again, I'm listing the seven coordinate conjunctions. There are only seven, and there's an ac acronym called FANBOYS to help you remember the seven coordinate conjunctions. The F stands for for, A stands for and, N stands for nor, B, but, O, or, Y, yet, and S, so. That's it, that's all the coordinate conjunctions. So you're gonna really have to remember what the fanboys stand for because I'm gonna continue to ask you that question as we move on through the semester, especially this week. Okay, so here's some practice. The first one, it says use, a co use the coordinating conjunction so to fix the comma splice below. So Sally was upset because her mom wouldn't let her go to the movies, comma, she threw a fit. You have two independent clauses on each side of the comma. You have two complete sentences. Sally was upset because her mom wouldn't let her go to the movies, complete sentence. She threw a fit, complete sentence. You can't join those with just a comma. The directions ask you to use the coordinating conjunction so to fix the comma splice. So here I've written, Sally was upset because her mom wouldn't let her go to the movies, comma, so she threw a fit. Remember, when you use a coordinate conjunction, you have to use a comma before the coordinate conjunction. They have to be used together. Now it says to use a semicolon to fix the comma splice below. It was raining outside, comma, I forgot my umbrella, which is very unfortunate. Um, if you were going to use a semicolon to fix this, you would just simply replace the comma with a semicolon. It was raining outside, semicolon, I forgot my umbrella. The third asks you to use a period to fix the comma splice below. I got to school late this morning, comma, there were no parking spots left. You can't use a comma here. You've got two independent clauses or two complete sentences. You can't do that. You're going to need to separate them with a period. Um, each one of these examples you can intermix. So like on the first example where it says Sally was upset because her mom wouldn't let her go to the movies, comma, so she threw a fit, you could use any coordinate conjunction that made sense. If you were writing this yourself, you could say, and she threw a fit. Or you could use a semicolon there and said, and take out so altogether and just say, Sally was upset because her mom wouldn't let her go to the movies, semicolon, she threw a fit. As a writer, you make thousands of decisions when you write, like every sentence. There are so many different ways to express one thought or one sentence. As long as you're grammatically correct, you're not wrong. 
So you get to make the choice. You have many choices to choose from. You just have to decide what sounds best to you in your writing. Make sure that you're doing that as you write. Just be grammatically correct. So now that you are finished with that, let me show you your assignment. Um, so I'm in Junior American Lit right now, but for whatever class it is that you're doing that, that you're working on for this assignment, you just would click the comma splice assignment. You can download the PowerPoint that I just went over, and then you are going to complete the assignment. You're going to download it, and basically it just has text boxes for you to type your answers. All of these answers can be found in the PowerPoint. So make sure that you get 100% on this. It's very easy. There's seven questions. When you're done, save it and submit it. And that is all you need to do today. Have a great day.